Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fantastic and fun Ask an Engineer. We're broadcasting live from downtown Manhattan in the totally awesome and full of stuff Adafruit headquarters. <laughs> I'm Lady Ada, I'm the engineer. With me is Ada Bot, Hello. who's on camera control, and Becky. Hi, over here. Who's over there and will be joining us later to show off her perfect piggy. <laughs> what? Hey. A lot of pressure. <laughs> or a very close to ideal porcine project. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff on today's show. Okay. Show what's on tonight's show. On oh, tonight's show, the code is going to be NFC. That's right. NFC is a code 10% off many kits in Native Fruit Store. On checkout, use NFC. You get 10% off. It's a good deal. We're going to talk about the show and tell. Lady Ada had, a, Lady Ada had an interview with opensource.com. We have a new tutorial on the site. We've got 100 repos. We actually have more, though. We, we have, have like 105 yeah. or something. I wrote an article know. about counterfeit Arduinos. Ooh, counterfeit Arduinos. Exciting. <laughs> the uh, open hardware event was in D.C. Call for submissions from the open horse the open horse <laughs> yeah, open source <laughs> hardware summit the open horse that's right folks <laughs> actually where's chris from the writer night he works on horse anyway that's true um you should call it open horse oh, okay. open horseware yeah uh we have another requirements doc for the adafruit academy a couple neat things from the blog a couple things from around the web things from adam as an educator we've got tutorials that we posted up this week we've got a review of an old kids game we got Becky's project. We'll talk about that. We got lots of new products this week. We've got stickers. We got a new product from Parallax. We've got wires. We've got a product we worked on with Make. We've got a neat video that we did for the lockpicks. Becky's going to talk about that. We've got an awesome new product in NFC RFID Shield, and we also have a new GPS. We'll also talk about our iPhone and iPad app that was uh, our next, our latest version. Yeah, launched, it just came out. Launched today. New updates. That's right. We'll have uh, some questions. We have a trivia question. We'll have a cat. Meow, meow. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. Okay. The cat, the cat will play patty cake, I think, with me. Yeah. I can't believe I've never seen that. All Incredible right. practicing. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's dive right in. Um, okay. The code is NFC. Remember, use Near code NFC. Near field communications. Yeah, anything that Adafruit makes is pretty much what is 10% uh, off. So uh, add it to your cart. Use NFC on checkout. The RFID NFC board that we're going to kind of debut tonight um, that's 10% off. So that's, that's right. a big deal. If you um, want to do RFID or NFC stuff, yeah. this is a good time. All right. Um, next up. Uh, the show and tell we just had. Yes. It was great. We had... Um, we had like six people. Yeah. This is The show and tells are starting to become my favorite part because we get to see the customers who are mm. making cool stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. So mm -hmm. William, uh, this guy, made an awesome Fallout replica yeah. thing. Yeah. It is amazing. When you, the, the, I haven't played Fallout. What? I haven't played Fallout, so I'm not completely sure. Yeah. Um, Sounds like it's a fun game. It's like a radiation-based game. Yeah, I think all video games are radiation-based in some way. That's true. There's um, always a nuke. There's always like nukes somewhere is, in them. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and then uh, he had this cool board on the back from I think from 4D Systems, and he has the Adafruit GPS that's pumping in data. Yeah. He has a switch that goes in between. Yeah, the two. there's like these old switches. I like super it. cool. And it like looks like a CRT. It's kind of cute. Yeah, super cool. Then uh, Frank uh, showed up. He is new to Arduino, so he showed the beginning of his project, and he went through all these things, which I like. Um, I, I, my latest article in Make was about how I like beginners the most because beginners are the most fun because they don't know enough yet to have... Um, all, po all possibilities <laughs> exist yeah, when you're a beginner. Yeah, and, and you kind of make fun discoveries. That's when it's the most fun. That's why sometimes it's fun to like, just learn a new programming language or pick up a new uh, hardware platform. Because yeah. you're like, wow, I'm like, this is the most free you can be. That was really neat. Yeah. And then Harry stopped by. He showed his latest uh, update on the random number generator, which is really neat because he generated yeah. a 7 megabyte text file. He, he put it in that lab. It, it, cool. it, yeah. it seems random, but yeah. how random? And then Thomas... Um, uh, I believe we've found a weekly series now, Dorm Wars, figuring out yes. hacks and mods and dorms. Last week was this uh, Nerf thing that would shoot someone if they came in. Uh, specifically, this girl was trying to feed him at night and choke him, and we don't know. Don't know. She probably just liked him. And <laughs> then uh, this one him. was a hack gadget that would um, alert him if the uh, RA was coming down. Right. So, yeah, so that's pretty neat. And then the last one was we played a video from the folks from Ready Made, uh, Red DIY Made, and it's this um, little ro paper robot that you can control over the web uh -huh. and do a wireless upload thing. You can control it with an iPhone. It's from yeah, the yeah. folks who did the wireless rabbit, uh, the NAS 
Nabastag. Nabastag, okay. Yeah. You can't remember names. I just can't remember that it's name. It's cute. There's like four things I don't you remember. You can't remember any names. <laughs> Those names I can't. So anyways, do you want to tell people how they can be on the show and tell? You don't even know my name. Uh, <laughs> You're Lady Ada sometimes. Uh, if you want to show off something fun and exciting, a project either starting, middle, or end, uh, you can shut off on our show and tell. It's super easy. Just go to my Lady Ada Lamore Freed uh, Google Plus page, and on the latest post where I say comment here, so I can add you to the show and tell circle, you should comment there, and I'll add you to the show and tell circle, and then um, you'll get an automatic invitation to join the show and tell at 9:30 every Saturday. Um, if you don't add yourself, if you, we don't add you to the circle, though, uh, you won't see it, so you have to do that ahead of time. Pretty easy. Yeah, um, it's working out. Um, we're also uh, going to be doing some more cool stuff with Google, so I can't talk about it, uh, but I'm very excited because uh, as they keep adding features and go doing cool stuff with uh, mm -hmm. um, their new platform, um, we're working on whatever, anytime they add a new feature, we're doing stuff. So I'm really happy about that. So that's why um, I think we're having fun with the Hangouts right now. So we started from the beginning before that it wasn't working all the time and it was kind of clunky. Now it's working perfectly. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, speaking of, um, just to uh, hop over back to the main camera here, um, if folks notice, we have, um, we're in more HD than ever. So Ustream had a new update. So yeah, I got smaller. Come on. We had more space. Yeah, look at this. We can actually Ooh. all fit uh, in the same frame. Hi, everybody. Ah. So the native resolutions of our cameras are now um, able to be pushed out through Ustream. So see more. Before I had to do this hack where I actually made it kind of HD-ish. So anyways. Um, so this is what, like 16 by 9 or what? Or? 760, 752 by 4 something. Anyways, it's, it's HD. It's HD-ish. Yeah, or 1162. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm not doing not full fine. high bandwidth because there's a lot of folks who don't have super fast connections. So we but found this question, one seems if they, to be if they the, have, If we have a high speed connection, though, can't they personally choose what yeah, speed? Yeah, but it, it doesn't, doesn't look as good. Yeah, so we every uh, week I was experimenting. Because it doesn't really encode it. It just like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, like... Oddly enough, one of the best experiences is the Ustream app for iPad. Like that one seems to get like the best possible like HD yeah, yeah. display. Um, depending on everyone's computers and how they're set up and what version of Flash Player, all these things, mm -hmm. um, this seems to be the best. We're broadcasting like middle of the road and we have like HD-ish like stuff. Yeah. So right. we'll see. We're trying. As always. All right. Um, next up, you did an interview on opensource.com, and you actually talked about the Flora, since mm -hmm. they had some questions about it, and wearable, wearable electronics, so everyone should check that out. Yeah, maybe Becky can post it. Yeah, Becky Yay, can Yay, thanks, link. Becky. And, uh... Because I can't remember it off topic. And someone <laughs> in the chat earlier asked for Flora updates. We are working on the LED system for the Flora, and, um, the... Latest bootloader for the Arduino should have should be done. We wanted to wait until there was a solid one. So things are all really good. We're aiming yeah. for a nice summer release for the Flora, but um, we're working on it. Also, our accountant was like, "Stop working on electronics and get me this yeah. information." Yeah, we also taxes, and uh, also Adafruit is looking to get a bigger space. So all yeah, these things. Yeah, very happen. exciting. When yeah. if if we close on it, we'll do a big post and maybe yeah. a video and show off this yeah. fantastic new Adafruit headquarters and another secret location. Yeah, and we're also prepping, we were trying to get a bunch of stuff done because we'll be at the hardware event and Maker Faire in May for the folks who asked yeah. about that too. Um, on the blog, we have this really neat um, Tron-like clock that Tron um, clock. that Dan did with our OL, OLED stylized uh, clock, he called it, but uh, he did a really neat thing with one of our products. So. Cool, like Tokyo Flash DIY. Yeah, a lot. Of, you know what's fun is uh, building clocks because when you're finished, you can display them and everyone gets to check it out. Um, next up, uh, Adafruit hit 100 uh, public repos on GitHub. Big deal. Yeah. Big milestone. And then for the public ones, there's, I have like 20 private ones because like as I'm working on stuff before it's finished, I, I don't public it because I don't want to have people be like, hey, it doesn't work. And I'm like, I know it doesn't work. It's yeah. not done. But we have like, you know, 20 more. So it, it's interesting. It took us like a year or two to get to 100, but we'll probably get to 200 much faster Yeah. as we do more stuff. So um, just my opinion and point of view about electronic companies and where you can get all your hardware and all your different things, I would say look at the companies that put their code up on GitHub and their files and give stuff back to the community. Rate the companies. It's almost like a better business bureau seal of approval. So see who's willing to do that. And I would like to see all companies ranked by their number of um, commits to 
Uh, we have like you know. commits like every day. But I, I would like, but, but there's a lot of cool companies out there, and I try to post them up on Adafruit who put all their stuff on yeah. GitHub. Um, one cool thing that happened this week, uh, Twitter put this uh, thing about patents that they're not they're not going to go after people. They're only going to have patents for def- defensive reasons, and their engineers and everybody there will will be able to sign on to this. And they put that up on GitHub. That was really neat. So, anyways, when you you can get electronics, and you know we have stuff in the store that other people have, like the stuff that we don't make, like you know little switches and parts and whatever little doodads. Um, but look capacitors. around, yeah, capacitors. Um, Look around at all the different companies on who will actually put stuff up there because I'm noticing in the programming space people are getting hired based on how many things they're putting up on GitHub. Yeah, sure. It's, like, it's like the modern resume for programmers. Modern resume for programmers. In fact, the headhunters call here trying to talk to you because you have so many um, uh, things up on GitHub. They want to. They they don't they don't Google enough and they just want to hire. They're like, oh, I'm a recruiter. I'm gonna I want to hire this this Lady Ada guy. Yeah. Anyways. I don't even hear these. I yeah. don't pick up the phone as much. No, I pick. I have to pick up the phone. That's my job. Okay. Um, so, anyways, that's a big deal. We have 100. Hopefully, we'll have 100 more soon. Happy Octocat. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next. The uh, only thing I, that weirds uh, me out about GitHub is the logo. The logo is the only thing that I, you know, I, I, I love everything about it, but the logo. You don't that, like the Octocat? <laughs> Octocat. What's wrong with Octocat? It just doesn't make any sense to me. All right. Th- just, that's okay. That's a bigger conversation. Branching. It's a huge. I, I don't want to get into this. I like Octocad. I don't. I mean, why is it in a puddle? You know like, what? Why is there a reflection? No, we're moving on. <laughs> why um, does it have five legs? <laughs> like we're moving on. Octocad. Um, that's so, eight. That's set for eight and has five legs, not eight legs. That eight legs, I'd actually be okay with it, but it has five. They call it Pentacat. I'm not talking about this anymore. Fine. I'm not. I can go all the way over here now. <laughs> Becky, it's your turn now. Uh, all right, so I did this article on, on, on Make. Yeah. And it was about counterfeit Arduinos. And uh, it was interesting because... Uh, this was because people were posting in our forums, and it turned out that they would have... Yeah. They were like, your shield doesn't work. And we're like, can you post a photo? Yeah. Like, That's not a real Arduino. So I have a box of, like, Arduino killers, and there's things that, like, other companies are like, we're going to totally kill the Arduino one day. Um, and then I have like counterfeit products now I'm starting to collect. So Arduino is now so popular, the brand is so valued that there's lots of people, um, and it's not a problem. I should just mention this is not a problem. It's a, it's kind of a funny thing now. It's kind of like going down to Canal Street and like seeing like really fake Louis Vuitton bags. Like this is not a problem. They're Real really... Louis Vuitton bags look like fake Louis Vuitton bags. It is kind of going full circle. It is a little bit of a circle. Um, but anyways, um, so there's fake Arduinos, and the Arduino fakes are pretty bad. So this one, and you can look at the article. Um, the silk screen is all messed up. It, it sometimes they say made in Italy on one side, made in China on, on the other. Like these are just really wrong. And the point of the counterfeit and the counterfeiters mm. is to fool someone. So one of the ones that I had in the article was this. Not a bad one. Um, what they did is they actually took off made in Italy because I think saying made in Italy is worse than using someone's trademark. So this is a fake Arduino. And then after they got caught. Um, what they did is they just um, re- on the on the auction on eBay they just photoshopped it off, but the customer still got one that said Arduino with the trademark, and it still said Uno of it, of course, and it didn't work, by the way. And then there's one. This is an Adafruit one. Someone uh, ran our ProtoShield and they um, put our logo on it, but they, the they put it on the they the put copper. on the, yeah they put on the copper, and they also um, the 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 boards were so bad quality that the uh, things fell off the um, the pads the pads fell off on the backside. Yeah. So, anyways, um, did this article, and uh, it was all about counterfeits. Now the problem is sometimes customers will say clone and counterfeit, and mm-hmm. I've heard clone interchange. So I wanted to be sure that I said you know Arduino compatibles are cool compatibles that add value. There's all sorts of great Arduino compatibles. We make them. We have. The Bordrino. Yeah. There's um, a million derivatives out there. There's awesome companies like Evil Net Scientist. Arduino and yeah. there's like Diabolino. And yeah, there's Freetronics things. has one. Sparkfun has a bunch of different ones. And these are all Arduino compatibles. And those are different than counterfeits. And the funny thing is some people actually can't have those two thoughts in their head. They assume if I'm saying that a counterfeit is bad that I mean a compatible mm-hmm. is bad. So I'm going to be doing another article and make my favorite Arduino compatibles. Because there's yeah. there's a menagerie of them. There's an ecosystem. Um, we're going to show off um, another one tonight yeah, that we developed with Make. Make. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, it did bring up some other interesting things. Though there are people who believe you cannot have trademarks and copyright and still have open source e- ethics. Hmm. There's people. Well, yeah, that no, say there, that. there's a full range. I mean, there's some. There's there's people who say well, if you do open source, you must be like 
a awful, evil, communist, socialist person. There's people who are like, you know, I'm a communist, socialist, and I'm a capitalist. I mean, like, there's, like, all sorts yeah. of, like, weird, mixed-up stuff. But what's stuff. interesting is some, some, some well-known people, in, and you should read all the comments, some well-known people in our industry believe there's no way that you can believe in open source and believe in trademarks and copyright, which I think is funny because open source only works because of copyright. That's how, that's the hack, yeah, that's, that's the hack that we all did. Yeah. Right? That's the hack. We say, you can use our copyrighted code, but you just have to abide by the license. If you don't, you can't. Right, like GPL doesn't work unless you have copyright, because otherwise there's no right. legal control over and, the and, code itself. And Red Hat is a company that uses open source software, but they have a trademark, they have Red Hat. You just can't start a business called Red Hat. You can compete with them any day you want. You get to get, you can get all the same stuff they get, mm -hmm. if you want. Yeah. So it's interesting that there's actually people who say, you can't, you can't believe in having a trademark, and think open source is okay, and you can't believe in open source and like vice versa. Very interesting. Would not I did not expect that from some of the people that posted. Some people do not believe Look, in intellectual. But property. you're like posting on the internet. You're gonna get like I'm the internet to respond. Eight billion people. There's a chance that some. Yeah. But anyways, I was surprised. So read it. Neat article. Yes. I have a follow up coming up soon. Anyway, speaking of open source hardware, there was an event in DC. I have not seen any videos or photos yet, but I would like to. There was a bunch of folks. Our friend Bunny was there. I was there. Bunch of open source hardware people. It was in DC. They're trying to talk to policymakers to get them to yep. consider open source hardware as. A what, is, new... is, what is public knowledge? Is this like it's like a government group, or what is that? I've never heard. I think it's a. Uh, I, I I can't. This is my guess because I don't know too much group? about. It. I think it's a group that's trying to get technologists in front of gov people. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, the open source hardware summit call for submissions, 2012. Yes. If September. you want to speak at this conference, you should. In New York. In September. New York, you should. Um, Cindy's nice in the fall. We were there. We did a talk. We want to see other people. We want to be in the audience to see people talk. Oh, that'd New be people nice. in the world of open source hardware. If you do open source hardware, please do a submission. Next up, uh, Becky, you posted up this one. This is the um, the multimeter requirements doc. So we have these badges that we do here at Adafruit, and Adam Kemp is a real life school teacher who does. Um, real life school teaching. Real life school teaching to kids. <laughs> so he's using these requirement docs for his yeah. students. So, anyways, that's up. Uh, next up, two last things or two more, a couple more things. Uh, someone made this really neat bench top. Uh, yeah, this kind of neat. Acrylic holder for it's the a, USB scope. It's for yeah. looking at stuff. It's actually kind of smart because it's, it makes it very easy to put stuff. They put a piece of plastic, so you just put whatever you want to look at on top. Yeah. And then it's very you know you don't have to worry about focusing because yeah. it's like it's it's fixed uh, focal depth. And then uh, Wired had a neat article about um, using all these little thermal printers, printing out things from the internet. Mm. And uh, you uh, yeah, did an interview with them. Yeah, they asked me a couple questions. Yeah, it was, it was pretty neat. And I, and I liked the thing that you said. You said when you turn something from... Uh, when you print something out. When you print something out. Into paper. Into paper, you think more about it because it's a physical thing. You're now, yeah. you're now like basically wasting paper, so you think about it more. So it was neat to see what um, all the different examples... And the thermal printer, um, uh, people are doing cool stuff with it. There's entire systems yeah. built around. There's like six different projects. Our Internet though. of Things printer, yeah. And uh, that is part of uh, Wired's new. Um, does, they have yeah, this, this is exciting. They launched a new blog, yeah. and it's kind of neat. It's like half ready made, half yeah. make, half. Uh, yeah. uh, what's it? Listen, like? listen to this lineup because this is this is crazy. Chris Anderson. Awesome. Yeah, listen to this lineup. Chris Anderson. He uh, he runs. The DIY um, robotics, uh, DIY drones, the 3D robotics company, open source hardware company, and he happens to be editor in chief of Wired. Shoshana Berger, she was the founder of ReadyMade. Uh, Allison uh, Arif, uh, former yeah. editor in chief of Dwell. Katarina Fake, uh, co-founder of Flickr, uh, Pinwheel, chairman of the board, Etsy. Okay. Uh, Christopher from Colossal, one of my favorite art blogs. Yeah, yeah. Adam awesome. Savage from Mistbusters. Bruce Sterling, uh, future predictor, Futurist. cool guy. <laughs> Um, Author, ranter. Yeah. So uh, that is a mutant force of, uh, I mean, it's like the Avengers of like this the, of, of makers. Like it's a really neat, a really neat thing. I don't know which yeah. one is the Hulk, but uh, anyways. Um, so check it out. Okay. They have a ton of like maker style stuff. It's a whole new section of, of Wired. If you like, if you like DIY. Yeah, I, I put it on my RSS feed. Yeah. I'm excited. Next up, um, ask an educator. Do check out all the new ones. This one is, can I use a three volt lithium? And the other one is, how can I teach my twelve year old to code? Um, you released a tutorial this week. You want to talk Very about this briefly? Very detailed tutorial. Oh yeah, it's it's really really detailed. And actually, I, I did I do want to add some more things to it, um, but it's it's gone well so far. It's a, a tutorial for the ultimate GPS, and uh, this tutorial like 
basically teaches you how to set it up, what the pins are for, how to add a battery. Um, it also goes into how to use the built-in data logging capability, um, including a parser that we wrote so that you can um, download the data from the data logger and then um, upload it to this JavaScript code we wrote and it will like dump out the XML format and also make a little map and that's kind of nice because the software that they use is only available for Windows so this way you can use it in Mac or Linux or whatever anything that can run JavaScript and then uh, the only thing I forgot to put up was a script uh, the code to erase the flash after you're done I, I forgot that you'll need to do that eventually um, but it's cool and, and so far it's worked out so if, if you have one of the ultimate GPS's do check out the tutorial because it's super detailed and we'll tell you everything you need to know about it um, next up our friend Mikey who's in New Mexico is doing a new series of uh of uh, articles with us, and this is um, learning about electronics by playing games, Rocky's Boots, and this is a really old, um, it's like ancient game. Ancient game, but you can use an emulator and play. Um, this looks like that Fallout project that was yeah, in, the show, in the show and tell. And then this is from the same folks who eventually did Robot Odyssey. So um, we're experimenting. And what was this? What, what was this for? What was this system? Was it a Commodore 64 or what was it? I believe it was an Apple II. Apple II. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, um, we're uh, Circuit Playground. Our app is evolving, and uh, there is a game po portion that's going to come out one day in the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing lots of research as a game. Designing games is hard, by the way. Oh yeah, no, and, it's the uh, hardest thing. Yeah, it is. It is really hard. So are you a game designer? Um, I'll, I'll put that hat on briefly. You think you can design a game? Well, so I do want kids to be able to learn electronics. And one of the things that we did on our site, and you remember this because I came up with this, is, hey, why don't we have people do resistor values instead of a CAPTCHA? Yeah. Because at least they'll, like at least some knowledge will, will, will happen. So there's kids and who so said... And so far, no spam bots have... Uh... No spam. No spammers want to learn um, the, no. the resistor values. But I've had um, kids and, and parents and teachers say, um, we love the CAPTCHA because when we comment on your blog... Um, we always learn a little bit each time. So there is some hacks and tricks I think you can get kids to do to learn. So yes, I think I can. I think I have some some specific things to teach electronics in a neat way. And we have all these cool characters now with our badge and stuff. So Blue Smoke Monster can come along. You know, we got a little robot guy. We got some stuff. This reminds me of Math Man, which only people who are at least 30 years old remember from Square One TV if you yeah. watch PBS. So, anyways. That's what, uh, See, that's you, what you have no idea, Becky. Yeah. Um, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up, um, we have a cool video. Um, Becky, do you want to come around here and talk about what this video is? Yeah, yeah. you have to, actually have to grab something. So why no, not? we're doing the pig video. Oh, we're doing pig video. Yeah, doing pig Perfect video. piggy. Yeah, we have a pig video. Do you want to talk about this video? Sure. That you're doing? Yeah, you talk yeah, about yeah, it. I, I forgot one more thing. For the show. So I made a project with the new coin acceptor. I didn't show it on show and tell. Yeah. So I'm going to show it now little house and this little piggy goes inside the house yeah and then when I put it in the corner you're gonna try to do this while it's yeah, right sure yes I mean it's not gonna go into the oh yeah Whoa. the coin is not it's not lined up but only if there was like a really neat video if only this, this so I made a video about how to make it so let's watch it Today I'd like to show you a project with the new coin acceptor from Adafruit it's an electronic piggy bank let's get started You'll need an Arduino, power supply, an LED, and a translucent piggy bank. We programmed this acceptor to take U.S. quarters. Since the coins fall out the bottom of the acceptor, we'll build basically a little house with a shelf for the acceptor to sit on and a little garage below where the piggy slides in and the coins fall into the bank. I'm using illustration board for the front of the house and to make a symmetrical peak of the roof I've measured halfway across the short end and then an equal distance down on each side to make sure my slopes are even. Next, mark where your coin acceptor will go and cut out a shape for the back of it to fit through. Mine's sort of a trapezoid. Mark and widen some holes with an awl and then use the included machine screws and nuts to secure the faceplate to the front of the house. Using the pig as a guide, mark where the opening will go and carefully cut it out with your utility knife. When the pig is all the way inside the house, the two coin slots should line up and build the rest of the house around the pig and the coin acceptor. I'm also going to add an LCD screen to my piggy bank 
and I'm going to use the LCD shield to just sandwich right through the cardboard. So I'm cutting a hole so that the header pins will fit through and sandwich onto the Arduino on the other side. To make my piggy glow, I'm going to use a pink LED. Solder on two pieces of solid wire to make the LED repositionable inside the bank. Use heat shrink tubing for good measure. If you can't remember which lead is which, use a coin cell battery to figure out the positive and the negative. The positive side goes to pin 11 on your Arduino or any of the PWM pins, and the ground goes to ground. Position the LED so it fits just behind the coin slots and it'll shine into the pig. Make a back for the house the same way you made the front, and now it's time to get to the programming. You can find the code for this project on GitHub. I made a few variables for the LED and set the LED pin as an output. When a coin is detected, there's some code to send some messages to the LCD screen, followed by a for loop to pulse the LED as a visual indicator that you've inserted a coin. It also grows brighter the more money's in the bank. So let's try it out. I plug it in and it asks me to insert one quarter. When you put in a coin, it'll recognize that and tell you how much money you have in the bank. So let's see how it glows. Back the piggy up into the garage and line up its coin slot. If you're not satisfied with just quarters, we also have this four coin model you can program to take four different coins. Pretty soon, I'll have enough quarters to do laundry and beat you at a pinball tournament. All right, great work, Becky. Thanks. A programmable like piggy project. Pro piggy project. <laughs> yeah. I like this project because um, parents can do this with kids so they yeah. can le or learn electronics and it's like the coolest piggy bank. So. Yeah, yeah. And you, um, can, and you learned something on this too. You are now able, uh, you're doing GitHub stuff now. Yeah, yeah you have to go on GitHub. Of, the code for this project is available on GitHub as mentioned in this video. Right. Now, <laughs> yeah. So um, you're about to get awarded a badge. We are not allowed to sell these to the public. We can only give these away to certain people. Yeah. As per the GitHub uh, folks that we know. And we couldn't give it to you until you learn GitHub. And you've got GitHub for Mac, and you're learning. You've learned how to commit and push. Uh huh. And I changed. I ed edited the README file today, and then I pushed it to the to the repository. Lock yeah. on. I committed and then pushed. Wait That's how you have to do it. Learning the lingo. You can't push and then commit. <laughs> you know what's gonna I'll be bad? later. <laughs> Wait till someone forks your piggy. It's gonna suck. No, like no, you're gonna pork, and then you're gonna pull. You're, you're gonna get pull requests. Pull pork requests. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. How long did it take you to think of that joke? What? Pull it's pork. All I'm a team of writers now. It's Thank all you for ham. My, for my GitHub yeah. badge, I'm gonna put it. It's all ham all the way down. All right. Um, Good so, work on that project. Yeah. I like the pink LED. That was a cute. And I like how it pulses to glow the. Mm -hmm. And it gets a little brighter, like the more money you put in it, but it's yeah. really slow, so that you could put like fill the whole piggy with coins, yeah. and it gets. And it's brighter. a really good project because you could easily adapt it. Like you could say only like five dollars more until you like reach yeah. the goal. Yeah. You can hook right. it up on the internet. It could tweet. There's so many things you can do this project, Tweeting and it's things. awesome that it's on GitHub. So please go out there and fork the pig. Please fork my. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it. You, can't, you can't say it. All right. <laughs> It's new product time. Okay, new product time. You, I'm going to drive new products. You're going to drive new products for a bit. Okay. It's new oh, product time. Do you see my glasses? Here they are. There they are. All right. Here okay. Go. I'll start off for you. Uh, okay. That's exciting. New products. New products. Okay, what so this, here, this first boy? one is um, fun because it's an accessory. Um, we had uh, the lady at his bento box designed by um, Amanda the Woz, Wozniak, the who was. best friend forever mm -hmm. and a uh, common visitor, uh, often visiting uh, the show. and. and showing off her stuff, and she actually designed this a really long time ago, and unfortunately we kind of like didn't get it done, but then we did, and now we have the bento box in the store, and the bento box is this project where um, you can take this beautiful auto box, these are like super crush proof, awesome, Waterproof. yeah, these are like excellent boxes, and they Float. snap, 
and they float in case you're, you know, in a kayak and you're doing electronics. Yeah. Which some people might do. Or you're just in a kayak and you want to put your wallet in there. Like, they're good for all kinds of that's stuff. That's true. Uh, I think of them as good project boxes for electronics. I, mm -hmm. I use them at my first job, so that's why I got the idea. And so she made this awesome laser cut cutout so that you could put um, an Arduino or Arduino compatible, whatever it would fit, and then um, a box, an Altoids tin, which you can fit full of cool components like me, and it's handy. Uh, it snaps closed. And then a breadboard so you can work on your projects on the go, and then when you're done, it can close and then you can put it in your bag and you don't have to worry about your project getting crushed and like these are totally indestructible. Um, so but, now what have we got? So now I just want to, yeah, I just want to review that. We now have these awesome accessory stickers which we'll show on the overhead. So there's a little spot on the box where it usually just says Otter and like I really dig Otter Box but um, it would be kind of neat if you could have something more customized there. So we have these um, fun stickers and we're going to be including them in the in the boxes from now on. But if you bought one a while ago, you can just pick up a, a sticker sheet and you can select one of six fabulous stickers. This one says Lady in his Bento Box. This one says Harmless Electronics Project. It's got this like, cool kind of green background. Harmless Science Project. Electronics Bento. If it's open to hardware, you can label it such. Uh, homework assignment. Which is that would have really been handy for me in college because I bought a lot of solderless breadboards to class on the subway and they have like the inspection checkpoints and the cops are like, what is this thing? And oh I'm yeah, like, oh, NYU, it's NYU, that's true. It's yeah, just my Parsons. homework. Um, it's definitely something that I would have really liked in school because I was always running around with like a courier bag and it's actually like quite difficult to have a box that has your project in it where it's contained and safe and like yeah, crush proof, protected. but also you can open it up and work on it. Like usually enclosures don't open and so that's what I really liked about, um, they're, they're kind of big but I think that they're like a good size yeah, for I mean, projects. I used to use like, you know, delivery food takeout boxes, like the plastic ones, and uh, those are like even bigger, less crush proof. And, and they like, totally get crushed. Yeah, and they're, they're like pop open and then all your parts go everywhere. And there's like soy sauce in them. Yeah. Okay, so that's so that's a fun one. I just wanted to introduce that. But I wanted to show the bento box so people weren't like, well, what's, what's this What's this bento box? Oh. You guys sell Chinese food, we know. Right. Japanese food. Okay, so next up, we have um, the Parallax Quick Start. And this is um, another fun new thing. This is a new board from um, Parallax. This is a really nice little box that comes in. And this is for the um, Parallax Propeller. We had Jessica Ullman on the, sh on the show mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago, and she is sort of their social media engineer, manager person, kind of jack of all, Jessica of all trades. Yeah, Jessica of all trades. And, um, and she was like, oh, you know, you guys should really uh, check out the Quick Start. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I remember hearing about this, and I, I you know, went to check it out. I was like, wow, that's a really cool board. So it's got a, a Parallax Propeller, an eight-core chip on the center, surface mount has an FTDI chip with a USB connector so you can program it uh, directly or communicate with it with the serial monitor. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of memory, I think, here, and uh, a crystal. And um, and then, this is kind of fun, there's LEDs, and then these are little capacitive touch pads. Oh, so they're basically cool. like buttons, but without needing a yeah. physical button. And then you can easily one. connect to this uh, female header piece here to connect to like the other 40 pins available on the um, parallax, and there's you know, power and ground jumpers, and then cool. on the back. Cool, pretty powerful chip. I've been meaning to try it out. Yeah, this is nice. Well, first off, it's it's very inexpensive. So the the, the problem is with most um, propeller bores is to you know the the chip isn't very inexpensive, and so by the time you make the board and develop it, and we carried one from Gadget Gangster. Unfortunately, it's kind of like forty fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an expensive chip mm -hmm. because it's so powerful. Um, but what's nice is that because uh, Parallax is making it, they decided, okay, we want to make something that's like under $30, and this is like $25, um, is like ready to go out of the box. It has like these capacitive touch buttons, LEDs, and, and there's actually a reset button as well. It has a programming it built in because you want to kind of just get it, you know, get going immediately. It has these nice mounting holes, and it's gold plated. So it's actually quite a beautiful board, and I, I think it's a really good addition, and so that's going to be the propeller. Mm -hmm. Quick start and board. didn't Jessica say that you can program it in C pretty soon, like they're working on a C thing? Yeah, it's in alpha or beta, but they have a GCC uh, C compiler for the propeller, which is really great because uh, it's a fantastic chip, but spin is uh, it's a little bit arcane. And for yeah, I mean, people like, who know Arduino... don't want to bother learning another language. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's like basic, I can understand, but spin is actually, it's quite, it's quite a challenge, even mm -hmm. I had a challenge learning it. And uh, I really like C, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Cool. Okay, next, cables? Yeah, we got some cables. cables. So these are um, longer versions, 
and shorter versions of um, some cables that we already have in the store. These are female, female cables from the overhead. But basically, uh, these are really neat. So we have the 3-inch the version, which is shorter. And uh, we have the 12-inch the version, which is so long, it actually won't even fit. So I have to kind of just like fold it really fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could fold it. And the, the cool thing about these is that um, you have uh, these female connectors and they're 0.1-inch spacing, so they fit perfectly in any 0.1-inch header, which is fantastic. You can even show connecting it to a 2 by 16 header. And uh, so they fit perfectly together, and they're rainbow colored, which is also really nice. So you get 40 wires in 10 colors. So you can see black through red, black through red, black through red. So you get 40 um, colors, or yeah, 40 sets. Uh, sorry, 40 wires in four sets of 10 colors. Oof. That's a lot of math. Um, and they're nice, so you can pull off as many as you want to make like a, a simple wire harness. So it's nice if you want to connect like an 8-bit bus, you can just pull off eight of these wires and you don't have to like remember which color is which and they also get bundled together. So that makes it really easy for wire, which is why I really like these. So we have the male-male ones and now we have the female-female ones in three sizes and we're going to get the male-female ones for that are basically extension cords and this will be the next batch that come in probably in a couple of weeks. And you will have an ultimate cable selection. Yes, you'll have all the cables. For your cabling pleasure. Okay, cool. Cool. Next is the Menta. Yeah, so this is really neat. This is actually a project we worked on a while ago, and this was a project that we worked on with Make. Uh, Make has been doing uh, a Mintronic series of electronics, and so they have like a Mintduino project, which is kind of a breadboard Arduino, and they have... And survival pack. They have a survival yeah. pack, a Support project pack, mm -hmm. and so they came to us and they're like, hey, you know, we really love your kits, and we love carrying Adafruit stuff, but we wanted to have something that, like, is maybe like a customized kit for us and we're like yeah we should totally do that so we brainstormed brains and <laughs> um we said okay let's do something that's in the line of the Mintronics and so we said okay well you guys want to have you know more Arduino projects so we thought well let's make something like a Borduino and something like an Arduino mixed together with a ProtoShield so it's it's a DIY kit version of an Arduino and you know you can plug shields into it and you can upload it to it with an FTDI mm -hmm. friend or an FTDI cable but the neat thing is, is it fits perfectly into a mint tin. Nice. Uh, it's an easy, also very easy to make. And the cool thing is, is that because it's, first off, it's nice and rounded, it's got four mounting holes, so it's really a, a nice, you know, Arduino compatible. It's got this huge prototyping area. And the way we designed it is that, you know, you can stick shields on top of it if you'd like, or you could just use this, like, bigger than a proto shield, protoing area, mm -hmm. and you can put connectors on it or buttons, and, and it all fits into a mint tin. So it's a very compact way to have a portable Arduino project. So I show it on the overhead? Show it on the overhead. So I'll just show that. The, the space is big enough for a, a little, one of the tiny breadboards, right? Too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can totally fit a breadboard on it. I didn't, I didn't grab one, but I can, you can imagine a breadboard is, uh, the little mini breadboards are only this big. And I think we have a photo on our site with that. So you can see it, it'll fit very nicely into the mint tin. But it, it, it kind of does press fit in. So once you get it in, it's, you have to kind of shake it to get it out. Um, but it has a uh, at Mega 328 Arduino chip, and it has uh, a DC power jack and a big chunky 5 volt regulator. I like the one amp regulators for when you're driving servos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a 3.3 volt regulator, which I thought was really useful because most sensors are 3.3 volts. Uh, there's a reset button. There's LEDs for power and also like a pin 3 13 LED. And there's like a crystal, and um, there's headers over here. So there's like the standard uh, shield header pinout. And then there's these big mounting holes. So you can easily attach this permanently to the tin if you want. Although it, if, if, once you put it in, it kind of stays put. Mm -hmm. But if you want to like permanently attach it, just use uh, 440 or M3 screws. And then there's this nice big proto area, some of which is... Um, sort of like a breadboard with the pins going down and across, and then there's a sort of freeform oh, prototype area. Two in one. Yes. Awesome. So I thought this was kind of a, a, a nice mix because actually I did, couldn't find any Arduino compatibles that mixed a nice big prototyping area with, you know, the Arduino compatible. So I thought this was kind of neat, and, you know, it, it's a fun kit. It's very easy, and uh, when you're done, you know, it, goes, it has an enclosure ready to go, which is yeah. another... Thing people often ask, it's like, hey, I want an enclosure and I want it to be small. And I'm like, okay, well, every enclosure is going to be a different size. This one fits very nicely inside. All right. Are the, the holes plated through? All the holes are plated through. 
we only get the finest quality circuit boards with like really strong uh, plate through holes and they're like, you know, lead free and um, the pads are really solidly attached. We, we usually go all out for the, nice for the nice, hello. <laughs> we go all out for the really nice circuit boards. That's one of the one of the things we really like about our, our beginner kits is uh, is how easy like you it, you know people will like attack them with a soldering iron and they'll be like it survived right. <laughs> yeah. it's a soldering project okay, okay. Uh, moving along let's talk about the lock picks yeah sure we actually I think showed these off last time but this time we have a video yes I made a video you know all about lock picking you're like an expert lock picker I'm not I don't know that I, I would like you to all believe that I'm an expert lock picker but I using the magic of video editing <laughs> no I do I do know how to pick locks I'm just de far from an expert um, as I mentioned in this video about the lock picks let's watch it let's take a look at the emergency lock pick card from tool now available at Adafruit what you'll find in the package is a fully functional lockpick kit stamped from high quality stainless steel packed into the size of a credit card. In addition to the variety of picks included in the set, the frame also snaps apart into three tensioners. While the kit easily snaps apart, it's sturdy enough that it's not going to come apart while it's in your wallet. I learned to pick locks at Hackers on Planet Earth at a demo by the Open Organization of Lock Pickers. And I practiced at home on this padlock, but I learned the hard way that picking a lock too many times can make it difficult to open, even with the key. So I recommend dedicating a lock to your lock picking practice to avoid heartache later. Now I can't even get the key out. A pin tumbler lock consists of a series of pin stacks all of which have to be in the correct position for the lock to open. Lock picking works by applying rotational tension to the tumbler and setting each one of the pins individually with tools instead of a key. Find a comfortable position to apply light pressure towards the end of the tensioning wrench. Try to push instead of pulling. And then play around with your various tools trying to push down those pins inside the lock. There are all kinds of techniques for feeling how many pins there are and figuring out which one to push down first. Even time trials where you can challenge your friends and see who can pick locks the fastest. Getting started with lock picking is super easy, but like most things that are worthwhile, it takes a lot of practice to excel. When all the pins are in the right position, the lock will turn and open. Yay! If you want to learn more about lock picking, we've made a special YouTube playlist full of videos to help you out. And MIT's got some great resources too. So remember to have fun, stay out of trouble, and I'll see you next time. Okay, great. Good work, Becky. Thanks. You'll totally like bust us out of jail when necessary using yeah. your secret lock pick kit. <laughs> um, actually, I like the, the, the lock pick set because, first off, it's like super cool because it's like slim, but it actually does work. It's like pretty thick. Yeah, High quality stainless steel. Yeah, um, I, if you're gonna learn how to like, this is great for your wallet, and I think that you, I'll carry it around in my wallet forever in case I get like, in case I get into an accident involving locks. Um, but um, I learned how to pick on like a, a sort of easier to hold set with longer yeah. handles. I like, and then using this one, it's like it's really good for emergencies. Yeah, if it's it's not it's providing the like best learning fun, experience. This is a maybe. fun conversation piece. Yeah, a good gift. Okay, like we've got piece. two more, three more. Yeah, we're right it. And then uh, we'll have a couple questions. It's all good. Yeah. Okay, great. Are you ready? You got 15 minutes. Me and Becky are totally done with this. 15 minutes. I just gotta Let's talk about the, time the new NFC Shield. Yeah. See, this is more fun. Go away, Adabot. Let's talk about NFC Shield. <laughs> uh, this is the new uh, awesome NFC Shield that we uh, brought out this week, which is really exciting. Uh, we had an NFC breakout board, but a lot of people were using it with an Arduino, and they were, and were like, kind of like, uh, it would be kind of handy if this was just stuck on top and like a lot easier to use. And we're like, okay, so we basically spun the board around and made it so it could snap directly into an Arduino. Mm -hmm. And um, we also uh, improved the code. The previous version used the SPI protocol. And for this version, we actually wanted to use fewer pins, so it uses I squared C, so it only uses two pins. And nice. you can use a third pin for an interrupt if you want, but it's actually not necessary. So you can use the I squared C bus, and then you can connect also like tons of other sensors if you want on the I squared C bus. This is a really great way to add 
um, NFC with like almost or RFID with a, like n almost no you know loss of pins, and um, it's a really nicely designed board. This is designed by Kevin Townsend. K Town. K Town. And uh, he did a really good job with the antenna. So the max distance in the specification of like NFC and RFID for the, the frequency is mm -hmm. 10 centimeters, four inches, and that's actually how far away it works. It actually works at the maximum distance, which is really cool because it means that you can attach this behind like a box or like a plate or you know like something to protect it, uh, and it'll still work. Whereas like you know really crummy. RFID um, or NFC board, especially one with a badly tuned antenna, mm -hmm. you, know, you have to touch it. And what's nice is that then, that means that if you put it behind any plastic, it won't work anymore because right. there's something between it and there's something blocking it. But this is a, like a really ultra high quality um, antenna that he tuned like by hand, which is super awesome. Awesome. So yeah, this is the shield. And what's interesting is that um, you know we wanted to make it so if you wanted to. Uh, put something on top, like you know, a wave shield or like an Ethernet shield or whatever. You would still um, be able to get to the the antenna. So the antenna actually sticks out the back a little bit, and uh, we decided to do that because we wanted to maintain um, the high quality antenna. And that means that you can't put anything in the middle. You have to have it be empty. Uh, and then there's a little prototyping area just because we had to extend it. You know, the, the circuitry isn't that big, and um, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's really cool. And we have a, a video that you're going to be doing this week with uh -huh. it. So. Uh, it works really great. It, it so it does RFID and NFC. So if you want to do NFC stuff, it works with that. If you want to just do RFID stuff, like detecting tags, writing to them, reading from them, um, we have tons of example code with that as well for writing and reading to any of the MyFair cards. And we have all sorts of tags from cards to stickers. And it works really good with all of them and, you know, all tested. Um, and we'll be doing a cool end of project with that showing how you can write a tag so that when yeah. you attach it with a phone, it goes to a website or an email automatically. So that's I found really that cool. my phone has NFC, so that's handy. I know. You were like, really? There's more than one? I have the, the Nexus S. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have the Samsung the Galaxy. Galaxy. The Galaxy, sorry. Yeah. The, the Galaxy. Neat. Yeah. It is right. stuff. Great. No questions before we move on to the Okay. Yeah, we'll answer more questions. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, next up is, this one's really fast. This one, yep. I don't worry about it. Yeah. These are all little fast things. The, the little GPS, is, it's just, uh, we have the ultimate GPS breakout in the store, mm -hmm. and it's been super popular, and people love it, but then some people are like, well, um, I really like this miniature GPS, but they want something even lighter weight or smaller, so they want to actually put this, just the GPS module itself, into their project. And so we're like, oh yeah, we'll put these in the store, and so you can add them, and we have, um, in, in our Eagle library, we have this, uh, as an object, and so if you want, you can. It's so tiny. It's just so tiny. Uh, so you can easily it's like add a it. giant hand. Oh wait, no. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, tiny, tiny I'll zoom in a little bit. So what's interesting is that this is a very, it is very small, but do not be fooled. This is actually extremely sensitive and high quality GPS. I know, like a, a lot of people are like, oh, if it's not the size of a Cadillac, like how can it possibly <laughs> get signal? But this is actually an extremely sensitive and well-tuned antenna. And people have even emailed us and said, wow, I compared this to like. A Surf 3 chipset, mm -hmm. and you know, and with a you know four times as large antenna, and they're like, this one is actually more sensitive. Um, it's a really great quality GPS, and it's like super teeny and super small, and it weighs only like four grams or something, smaller than an American quarter. Um, so yeah, this is this is a fantastic GPS, and I, this is kind of like the ultimate GPS. I call it that I because it is. But I really do love this this GPS module. I think it it has everything you could ever want in a GPS module. And it's at a very reasonable price as well. Built-in antenna and everything. Go pick it up. So pick one up if you want to do a GPS project. Sweet. Okay. The so last new product is up to Adabot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Switch places. Yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go super quick because I just want to briefly talk about some uh, quick things. So Circuit Playground. You can go to CircuitPlayground.com or you can go to iTunes and search for Adafruit or Circuit Playground. 1.1 is out for iPad and iPhone. We do this for both. It is Retina display. Capable. Yeah. It looks beautiful. This big, but it's on the screen this big. Um, we just added. Tell me what's new. Okay. There is a whole new menuing system, and we have new types of calculators. Okay. Um, the first one is the 555 calculator. We have both one shot yeah. and, uh, well, or mono stable and a stable. So you can do your repetitive or non-repetitive 555 calculations. Yeah. And it's cool because you can type in um, the frequency you want and the capacitor you have, and it'll tell you like what resistors you can use, or if you want to delay a uh, timer, you can actually put that into. So it's just, you and you can calculate backwards and forwards. So if you have a certain setup, you can it can tell you what the um, duty cycle and frequency is, yeah. or vice versa. Yeah, and just real quick, I, I'm going to um, I'm going to see how 
this looks over on the screen here. But um, you know, the uh, the yeah. cool things is we have we have this neat animation. If you look, so you know, five five calculator, it animates in really nicely. Anyways, I just wanted to show that Give real me quick. The camera. No, then we have the RC calculator. Um, I'll um, I'll flip back and forth here. Yes. Um, so that's the iPad version that you can see, which is gigantic. And then we of course have the um, iPhone. Um, we're developing it. Um, Can you talk about the RC calculator? Yeah, 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 please do. The RC calculator is for low pass and high pass. Ooh, both passes. Um, and it will calculate uh, the 3dB point for um, your, your higher low pass filter, or you can tell it, you know, what uh, frequency you want, and then it will, you know, tell you, like, what capacitor resistor you use. Usually I go, if you go with a fixed capacitor and then a frequency, and it will tell me the resistor. So, you know, you can do it either way. Um, and that's handy for doing this stuff because I can never remember if it's like 2 pi f or 2 pi over f or w or like omega and, and then it's all over and then I'm trying to find yeah. my copy of Harvard's and Hill. And then we also have the microcontroller reference sheets. So, um, oh yeah, these are new too. Yeah, so we um, actually talked to the folks who do the ones that everyone loves out there and here it is, microcontroller reference. And you can so see... We're starting to do pinout references. So we, yeah. we began with... Uh, the, you know, basic AVR stuff, but we'll be adding um, all of your favorite components, such as op amps. I really want op amp because I can never remember which one's the positive and yeah. non-inverting inverting, uh, one on a quad op amp. And uh, but we have all the the AVRs in there, and we can also add picks and um, yeah. other chipsets, and we so, also have the basics. So we got everything in here. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, as always, um, this app. It's not free. It's two ninety nine. But when you buy it, you get a code for two ninety nine off in the Adafruit store. So it is basically free. Circuit Playground Live Now app. Uh, the Apple Store just released the latest update uh, tonight, right already, before the if show. You, if you've already bought the app, it'll you auto it automatically updates for you yep. and for free. That's right. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick speed round of questions. Are you ready for this? Okay, let me just mention the code again. What? Mention the code again, maybe. Should we do the? Yeah, we'll mention the code. Okay. The code tonight. is NFC. NFC. Yeah. Well, because we just showed the NFC shield, so I thought maybe yeah. if people wanted to pick one up, NFC. you can get 10% off of the NFC shield or the NFC breakout. Yeah. So we're excited about Circuit Playground. Go Circuit Playground. Yeah, we have a lot of more updates coming up soon, too. Yeah. Okay, first question is, are there any tips for imp implementing ZenCart? Um, get the latest version, and just uh, when you do your first, you know, setup, um, just be aware that you might have to delete everything and start over. So just don't get too attached to it. Okay. That's it. Next up, uh, one push button for two microcontroller possible in Arduino and ATtiny if the ATtiny is dedicated to one task. Wait, what? One push button for two microcontroller possible. I think they want one button with two microcontrollers. You can have uh, two two microcontrollers reading one push button, yes. I mean, just make sure that, you know, there's a pull-up yeah. resistor and that you're not accidentally writing to the push button. I don't see why you can't have one connected to both. Okay, next up. The Adafruit About section is great, but have you considered spending upon more depth history in the business side of it for those of us also planning to start open source hardware business? Oh, Actually, good luck. Search for Zen Cart Zen's Day for uh, Kitbiz. We have a Kitbiz, Kitbiz category. We have a Kitbiz. Um, there are so many things. You in can... our tutorial section, we have like tons of business tutorials. Yeah, we had um, Software Sunday where we outline all of our things. On Make, there's this thing called Maker Businesses Adafruit where I talk about every little piece of the business that we do here. And um, if there's interest, uh, we'll dedicate a, a section to, or a uh, session um, on like Google Hangouts or something. I'll answer all the business questions. This is like. Well, we've answered much of everything yeah, already. Which is great. I could just yeah. throw links left and right. Yeah, yeah. There was all, it's all up on the blog or in the tutorial section. Right. Tons. Uh, next up, uh, where did it go? Uh, does Adafruit have the new primary colors of Sue Group? Not yet, but we will. We don't. Here's the thing. Uh, we're going to, but we want to first sell through what we have, so we have only super fresh Sue Group. Yeah. We don't want to like mix it all up and have it be confusing. But uh, as soon as we order the next batch, we will be getting the new primary color. Next up, can I use two codes in one order, the NFC and the iPhone app code? No, you can only use one code at a time. Yeah, we only have one uh, one box. So you can. Next up, just FYI, uh, CAPTCHA is awesome. It's difficult for someone who's colorblind like me. Just saying. Uh, you know what? Actually, we have colorblind people who say it's not a problem for them. So It's hard for me, too, though, sometimes. I yeah. often mess it up. Uh, but if you can't figure it out, we uh, can still release the comment, and we actually do. So, yeah. anyways. Uh, next up. Question about the motor shield. I have a small stepper motor and have it wired correctly, but nothing can get the stepper to spin. Do I need to provide other power aside from the Arduino 9 volt? 
Uh, that's right. You need to power the motor shield itself. So check the uh, product page and the tutorial page on it. It'll talk about how to provide power to it because an Arduino mm. cannot power a step We have that. a massive FAQ in the forums and about using attack. the motor shield. Yeah. Uh, next up, do external manufacturers, P and pick and place, generally give you back the excess components if you give them a bigger reel than you need? Or do you use digi-reels, et cetera, to only give them as much as they need? Um, when you send from a manufacturer, usually there's an overage, so you usually have to send them 10 to 20% more. And uh, if there's anything left, they will send it back to you okay. if you request it. Next up, MicroTouch. Uh, we haven't, we don't have any updates, but we're working on a new version. As soon as it's ready, we will post it on the blog. It's not out yet. Don't ask. Um, uh, I'm new to this stuff. What's an AVR? It's actually a good. An question. AVR is a, a AVR is a brand of microcontroller made by Atmel, which is a, a Norwegian company, and it's basically a microcontroller chip that you can program. It's popular because uh, the compiler for it's free. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You mentioned Wired. What other news sources did you read? Any cool subreddits for hardware? Generally, the Reddit hardware stuff, I think it's starting up a little bit, but in, usually my daily stops are uh, Hackaday. Um, I stop at the Make Blog. I stop at, um, i trying to think. Uh, I like Colossal Art for the art stuff because if you just look at hardware all day, I think you might mm. go nuts. Um, I really like, uh, what's another good one that has good projects? Uh, Dangerous Prototypes. I like their blog. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. you know. Those are ones. Yeah. Um, I, I don't should... really read it, so I yeah. don't know. Uh, next up, uh, do, 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 do. what's a simple to make project that is nice to show off? Uh, stuff with LEDs. Yeah, LEDs are fun to show off. Yeah. Uh, will you ever carry the Rocket Scream Reflow oven Arduino Shield? Probably not. I don't, I don't think so. I don't, yeah. We don't have a lot of demand for that. Good. Yeah. Like uh, what's the best way to slow down a DC motor that drives the wheels of an RC car using an H-bridge controller to a microcontroller? I keep up in the show and tell. Um, an H-bridge or a, a gear. Gears are good. Gearbox. Handy. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. I believe. Oh, have you ever considered VEX Robotics items to so, sell? Uh, yes, considered it. Not going to. Uh, really expensive, not good margins for us. If you buy like a million of them, if you're like a Radio Shack, um, right now the robotics, the robotic product that I'm most excited about that we got in store is the Parallax Board of Education yeah. board. I like it a lot. The robot. Um, the VEX stuff is good, but it's not as um, we're coming at it from the Arduino side. So for us, like the VEX stuff is more for like the first. It's it's like a, a different market for us. Yeah. So we're coming at it from like Parallax and. Arduino and Adafruit, so we're going going for it that way. Um, mm -hmm. We're not opposed to it. If they ever, I, I would love to see them work on like a Vex shield. That'd be kind of neat. Um, one of the folks that we work with is actually considering that because there's some type of like hard way to do it, and then they came up with an easy way. So not outside the range of possibilities. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I had to, I had to make a sumo buff. Okay. Uh, I believe. That I saw the question. Cool. You're like, no, oh, you're not gonna answer the questions, but okay. you had. The, I need more yeah. questions if you want. Uh, are you gonna carry the uh, the new Bluetooth uh, low energy radios? We're working on Bluetooth. I the thing is, is that the low energy radios are not backwards compatible. So if we carry them, it, you know, you have to. Okay. Not everything works for them. Oh, this is one I can answer. This one. Are you gonna do anything with Raspberry Pi? Yes, that's the one thing we forgot. Um, we were gonna do it. It's not out yet. Don't ask. We got a Raspberry Pi. We actually have a physical one. It's on your desk right it's now. It's on my desk. And we're working on accessories for it. And uh, we'll have something to mention soon. But we have one. We actually physically have one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, There's no power plug. Why does my fingerprint reader go to sleep and wake up on its own? Good question. The forums. You might not have a wire. It, it could be. Yeah, it could be a wiring issue, or it could it could think that it. You know, it, there's a yeah. camera. If there's a shadow that looks a little bit like a, a fingerprint, maybe it's waking up because it thinks there's a fingerprint. Yeah. Uh, any suggestions of where to circuit info on how to make an EL wire inverter? Um, I don't I don't know. I mean, you can Google. I've never made yeah. one. I usually just get the inverters ready made. Where do we get our conductive thread? Um, we have it manufactured to our specifications, yeah. so it is our thread. We get yeah. it from us. We, we, uh, had, we had specifically, and we had to buy like 20 cones yes. because... If you would like to buy our thread, you can buy it at a very reasonable price from us. You just excellent thread. Yeah. All right. Sales That's it. Sales. We're done. Good work. We're going to wrap this up really quick. Uh, trivia question time. Okay. I want to go get that. I want to get a cat. Mm -hmm. Go get the okay. cat. Can you do the rules? The rules are uh, we're going to ask some sort of question, and the first person with the correct answer to type it into the chat that we see on our window with the correct spelling and all that good stuff is the winner of a fabulous prize. The fabulous prize today is... 
this NFC and RFID Shield kit with extras for your Arduino or Arduino compatible. Um, if you've won something from the Adafruit show and tell or uh, Adafruit chat contest and you want to win something, well, maybe go get a sandwich. Yep. Because we want to make sure everybody wins a fabulous okay. prize. We're going to do the NFC. We're going to give away the uh, NFC shield. Okay. That's what we're doing. Yeah, I just said that. Yeah. What's the question? All right, are you ready? In 2004, three companies established the Near Field Communication Forum. Three the companies. NFC Forum. The NFC Forum. Three companies in 2004. Which three companies are they? They put down their arms. Oh, wow. This, guy, this person got it. That was really good. Nokia, Philips, and Sony. Uh, Kalutu 247-2. I get a prize for no one. You won. Nice you work. Cthulhu. Won. Yeah, great work. I did not expect anyone That'd to get really that easy. fast. Wow. Okay. Cthulhu, how did you know that so fast, just by the way? Maybe you could read your mind. He says yay. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Wait a minute. Becky, are you the... <laughs> yeah. I have the cat. I have it out. Yeah. Okay. okay. Time traveler, yeah. All right. You can travel in time, but you can only answer trivia questions on Ask an Engineer. Sorry. Um, okay, great. All right. You wanna That's exciting. Well, you win it. You no, obviously no, care no, deeply no, about no. NFC. So NFC winners. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, the person guessed what it might be, and they had it pre-pasted. That's crazy. What? That's cool. Yeah. You know what? You should win a prize just for that. <laughs> hey, MozFit. There he is. Meow. Patty cake. Patty cake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's like patty cake. We have to be over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, patty cake. Yeah, we watched that cat patty cake video. Patty cake, patty cake. I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. yeah. You, you gave up. Yeah. Just yeah. never. No. You dropped it. You dropped it. <laughs> patty cake. Patty cake. Yeah. Anyways. Cat was not very happy. All right. Okay, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay. Becky, come back in the screen oh, here. Oh, yeah, you scratched me. Yeah, I have to get this right. Don't you. scratch me, MOSFET. Thank you, everyone. Be a uh, Fantastic show. Um, big news coming up soon. Uh, we'll talk about it in the next few weeks. Uh, Whatever so new, could it be? New, pe new people joining the Adafruit team. We're getting a new space. We have some awesome new crazy products. Things are going really well. I know. i got to go back Whew. and program the picking place right now for all these awesome new things, which I didn't, we didn't even have time to show off in the... It's not out yet, so don't ask. Yeah, next, we week, time. next week we'll try to remember to talk about the Raspberry Pi accessories. We're yeah, on. we do have a Raspberry Pi here, so. Yeah. Okay. Have a good week. It's small. All right. It's green. Here is your moment of zener. It's pie-shaped. It's actually not pie-shaped. It's rectangular. It's rectangular.